Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I call, and are you ready, an exclusive interview. We have a, a total special guest, and we think about you know, the fascinating people out there that have made great impact on the martial art field. Some of those people, let's say, for example, um, they were martial artists and they became a movie star. Some other people who have made great impact is like a community guy in a city that gave a tournament for many years, gave a great impact to that community. Another person might be who have had an indelible impression in the past might be somebody who gave like uh, SOP, standard operating procedures that change the business model. This particular guest and why it's an exclusive is that I haven't seen him being interviewed for many, many years. And this is a gentleman who, I don't know, it must have been 15 years ago or something. He changed the way digitally that we got as a field inexpensive leads, that we got new, new programs, new inquiries. It was absolutely incredible. And so this gentleman really has a great story and has done, has built two companies on, on the lead gen platforms and has really rocked the martial art world but you don't hear from him or you don't see him. He's in the background, but today is different. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'd like to introduce you to Jeremy Llewellyn. Jeremy, how are you? I'm good, thanks for having me. Thanks for the intro. Jeremy, people will know exactly uh, what companies you founded in just a few minutes. If they don't know already, before we give them that though, I'd like to, you to talk about, I don't know, you're like 22 years old and you're in North Carolina, right? And uh, you're a police officer, right? Tell me about the situation and kind of what happened because that'll give everybody some context. Yeah, um, so first again, thanks for having me. I, it's always fun to talk uh, to you and always fun to kind of like talk about uh, martial arts stuff. Um, so, guess maybe even before we get to the time I was 22, what's important to know is I was a martial arts student. Uh, in my teen years, I did Taekwondo. Uh, when I went, my dad was the chief of police where I'm from, but I was like a super nerd. I was a computer programmer, wannabe computer programmer. Um, and I went to college and I did martial arts while I was there in Wilmington, North Carolina. I um, was, you know, I probably spent, I'm not even joking, like, three to four hours a day in a, uh, in an MMA gym. And, uh, it wasn't very good, but that's beside the point. Um, and I was, you know, doing my major of business and computer science. And, um, I, my internships were, you know, in like this new thing that was kind of starting at the time in 2007, mm. 2006, which was like, uh, you know, search engine optimization was that more growing and, and buying digital ads and things like that. And um, what ended up happening is when I graduated college it was like 2008, they were in the recession mm -hmm. and I, you know, I didn't really find any sort of like computer jobs. Uh, and I really, you know, saw my dad being a police officer. I want to be a police officer. So I just one day applied to be a police officer and I got the mm -hmm. job and um, which is like shocking, right? To, to me at the time and so I did that and um, I was going through um, rookie school and as you know John and um, uh, just got out just got released and um, you know I think there's like this constant state of just you're like trying to wrestle with people and yeah um, you know just you know police like you're just kind of exposed you don't you don't know uh, who's your friend? Who's your enemy? You get sucker punched or you get knocked on the ground or all these different mm -hmm. things. And so um, after like a few months of me just getting, getting released, I weighed like 150 pounds. Mm -hmm. I was like, I need to go sign up for this Krav Maga school. Like I've heard about Krav Maga. Like I need to like really get good at this stuff so that I can quit, you know, getting beat up all the time. And um, yeah. So Jeremy, you were getting thrown around a little bit. Did you have any SEO experience at that point with yeah. any other clients yeah 
Yeah, it, I was doing uh, SEO um, in my internships uh, in college for for um, it was a golf course in a hotel in um, mm -hmm. uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And it was an an agency that was like going around and signing up these golf courses and doing their SEO for them. And I had built this tool that could like do the SEO really fast. Mm -hmm. and that was, uh, uh, you know, you'll see that kind of come into play later on. But that was kind of one of the the original inklings of ideas that I had. So you have the idea, I'm going to walk into a Krav Maga school, I think it was, right? Yeah. Um, and, and what so, transpired? Well, so what happened is that I called the school on the phone. And, you know, I was 22, 23 years old, and I was getting this answering machine. And I was like, you know, I just, I don't know, it's kind of weird, but I had this idea that, like, it's all these like tough guys in this gym and they're going to hear me, you know, saying, Hey, I want to sign up for Krav Maga. And they're just going to, you know, be listening to the answer machine and maybe not even call me back. I might not even be eligible to sign up for this place. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but anyway, uh, I called and no answer. I called the next day, no answer. And so I called and called and called and called and no answer. I would go by the school in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. It was, the doors were closed. And so I was just like, how do you go to this place, right? Like, <laughs> You're talking about some barriers, right? <laughs> yeah. Barriers and to so, entry. Yeah, exactly. I, I just, I don't know. I assumed at that point that, um, you know, maybe they were avoiding me or something, you know? And so <laughs> I was driving by the, the uh, school one day and I saw it was on the right side of the road, big Krav Maga sign. Um, and the door was open at like 12 in the afternoon like one door open nobody's there and nobody's in the parking lot and i like swooped in um and i walk in and i'm like hey like how do you sign up <laughs> how do you do <laughs> <Here this>? I <laughs> am. <laughs> yeah and so then they gave me like a class schedule you know the kind of the works of like here's yeah. how you how here's a free pass for the day or something and and that kind of got me going yeah but the wheels were turning and yeah and, and you went to the owner eventually and say hey i can, I can really help you here so well, kind of what happened is that they had two two schools, um, and the one of the schools was doing really well. And one of the schools was just kind of doing okay. Uh, I think it was like they were they were just kind of breaking even. And um, the, the, by the way, the guy who taught, teaches is Ryan Hoover. He's like one of the greatest Krav Maga people that you know I think in the world. Um, and uh, I was just like, man, your classes are so good. And I wasn't talking to him at this point. I'm talking to his program director. And he's the one telling me that, yeah, that, you know, we're, we're still trying to figure out how the, the, the Charlotte school is going to work. Um, and um, I'm like, man, I know what your problem is here. It's, it's not that your skill set's not, you guys are amazing. It's that uh, no one can contact you. <laughs> like no one can sign up. And so um, I pitched this idea, I think at the time, which was like, you know, if you'll give me some free classes, uh, then I will uh, help you. I can fix this for you. I think. I think I can fix this for you. And so, um, at this point, you got to figure like it's 2008, 2009. Like cell phones are like smartphones mm -hmm. are starting to become more of a thing. Mm -hmm. And um, then we so they said, yeah, here's the Charlotte website. Let, let's see what you can do. And so, I literally made a page that just said like, tell me what you're interested in. Mm -hmm. Here's some classes that we offer, and here's a form. And um, within, you know, a couple of weeks, like mm. I had to copy where every time he would get a lead, it would send him an email and it would mm. send me an email. Mm. And I remember driving to, uh, I, me and my girlfriend at the time were going to the zoo. And um, as I was driving, my phone was going ding, ding. Mm -hmm. And it just was like mm. every 10 minutes, it was ding, ding. And by the time we had gotten to the zoo, which was like 40 minutes away, there was like five leads in, mm. in the inbox by like, you know, 10 a.m. on a Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this might be something. Like, there might be something here. Isn't it fascinating that, that there are always defining moments? Like you said to this guy, hey, can I get some free lessons? I'm getting knocked around. And by the way, I can tell you what your problem is. <laughs> so in the digital world, um, your mind is twirling and you're saying, wait a minute, I can develop a, a landing page. I can develop a website. I can get that traffic. If I, if I can uh, optimize it properly, I can get the traffic to go to him. So he's got an inquiry. I can get it to his phone. 
So this was the birth of what company? This was 97 Display. This was uh, when, we, when we first started it, we actually called it Rocket Search Marketing. Um, and so another funny story, you know, police officers don't make a lot of money, as you know. Uh, and I could, uh, so I was like, uh, I want to build a website um, and didn't have a company name at all. I'd, I'd, Rocket Search Marketing was what we were going with at the time. And there was a template on the website or, or a template website that I was like, I'll make this the new homepage for, for the company. And the website was called 96 Display. And so I contacted the guy who created the graphic for that. And I was like, what would you charge me just to change that six to a seven? And mm. can I use this template for that? And I paid him like, he was like, oh, I'll just give you, I'll change that for free. And here's the logo, uh, 97 display. And here's the, um, the website. And I was like, I think he charged me like 20 bucks total. And that was like, that was where the name came from. That was where the first website came from. The entire thing started right there. Yeah, and Jeremy, you were working really closely with Brother Mark and the Coquinas family back then, and you got some of our board members, and all of a sudden, you were off to the races. I mean, you were enrolling people for web generation websites, and it was flying. It was really doing well. Yeah, EFC was the re I think EFC was the reason why it became anything of substantial value. Like, if you kind of look back at it, like, we only had like 10 or 11 customers. Um, mm -hmm. And we, and Raj um, knew, had connected with someone who, I think he saw their collections just like going up and up and up. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, what are you doing? And then Raj called me, got my phone number and was like, I've got another guy who I wanted to you know, see if maybe this mm -hmm. website thing works over here. Cause you have to figure out this time, what it wasn't like, oh yeah, you need a website and that will like mm -hmm. help you out. It was just like, it, it was just like, they just, there's this weird thing going on collections are going up what do we do and so Raj connected me with Steve Sohn and then um I remember we I told Steve I was like I don't I didn't know Steve at this time and I was like yeah this thing works uh this is how it works this is how we're going to get leads and um Steve uh was like okay we'll try it we'll see what it does I don't really use my website for that much you know really anyway so let's just see what it does and so Steve was just like first day got like 10 leads I mean it was just like just flowing in and he messages me and he's like, uh, he, call, he called me. I remember I, I, everyone saw the website. I went to go get lunch. He calls me and he says like, this thing really works. He's like, this, this is like game changing here. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like off to the races from there. Then I got, you know, uh, I think EFC like really started uh, pushing 97. It, I think that you, know, you guys maybe realized like, this is like the future. You guys kind of spotted that like, there's mm -hmm. a trend here. And I will say, like, at this time, being 22, 23 years old, I didn't have that, like, mm. vision or insight that this mm. was going to be, like, this thing that could help all these schools. Mm. I was thinking more of, like, well, 10 schools would be mm. enough for me at the time. Mm. And so, mm. yeah, when EFC got behind it, it, it really accelerated. So fast forwarding, uh, I don't know how many years maybe you can tell us. You say, okay, I'm going to sell the company. I'm going to sell 97, Right. Right. And so what was the transition like? What was the reason for selling and where was Jeremy's life? We get, so we have some context. Yeah, um, no, it's a great question. So I was like 27 when I first started thinking about selling it. I think I sold when I was actually 28 um, or I was about to turn 28. Um, and for me, I, um, I was wanting to like 97 display at the time, I felt like was very far ahead of uh, everybody. Like I, it was just, we, everything we were doing, I felt like we could take any school and we could like, you know, just pour leads into a school. Um, and I just was wanting like a new challenge, I guess you'd say. Mm -hmm. And um, the team that was there at the time was really good. Um, the, and by the way, I don't know the team today, so I don't, I, I'm not speaking any way about what's going on today, but more of just saying, um, the team there was really good. The, they had great sales teams. They had great programmers. And, um, you know, I was, you know, feeling pretty confident they were going to take it and uh, run with it. So it was just a really easy departure. I went back to business school and got my, my MBA. Mm -hmm. Great. And uh, then you had your own 
great ventures in computer science with major companies. And that was adding to your experience, I think. Yeah, I worked in Silicon Valley for, I lived there for a few years and worked at some uh, very well-known tech companies. Um, then I got to transfer down to Southern California. And so lived there for a few years, still live there and um, still work at uh, another tech company, large tech company. But I, I think that you've been hanging around some of the, and analytics, some of the most greatest developers in the world. I mean, and that's not an overstatement. I mean, mm -hmm. you've been around some of the greatest people in the world and you've been, you know, going up the ladder very strongly with all of your skills. Yeah, I think that uh, the, the engineers that I've been working with are, are awesome. Uh, at mm -hmm. every company I've been at, they've it's always consistently been like some of the best engineers that I've ever met, probably best in the world. Yeah, so Jeremy, then all of a sudden, you want to re-enter the lead generation website company again. You want to develop a new company. So what's what's stirring in your mind and how did you come to that conclusion that you wanted to go ahead and build another platform that's different? What yeah. happened? Yeah, so um, I, great question. I uh, had spent a lot of time thinking about like, what would I've done differently? <laughs> to create these, these websites. Like, what would I have changed? What would I have done differently? What would I uh, improve on? And, um, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the things I had learned, I felt like I uh, wanted to put to the test. I wanted to know, like, how would it work, actually, if I, if I tried it again? So uh, we came up with this idea um, of making like this AI based website system where uh, it would automatically um, generate the website, it would automatically optimize the website, it would, uh, you know, I, I always compare it like this, like if you, if you think about like um, financial advisors, right, like there was a time when like you would invest your own money and uh, then it became like, well, then there were advisors who would help you kind of like build this portfolio for you and put you in this portfolio, but you really kind of maybe didn't know what all they were doing, but they were doing everything for you. And now you can kind of see like things are moving. A lot of people are moving towards like robo advisors where a robo advisor is like moving in and out of stocks for you. It's like tax loss harvesting. Mm. It's like capturing gains. It's doing things that like one person would not be able to sit you know, on one person's portfolio and just manage it all day long. These mm -hmm. algorithms can do these things better than humans can. And so it was that kind of concept where I wonder if we can make um, a really advanced uh, AI-based website platform. Great. For more artificial shots. intelligence. Yes. So then all of a sudden you're saying, <clears throat> I've built a whole new system. You know, I've built a whole new system with the latest tools and your mind is still churning about, you know, how can I make this even better? And, and what did you call the new, the new company? Yeah, so it was pretty direct on the name. Uh, we wanted, we were thinking about something like, we are like the, because it is an AI, you know, it, it has its, we, we kind of view it as like, it's its own entity that's controlling it. Like, um, so we, we named it Abby. <laughs> and so Abby, dot AI was, is the business name. Great. And, and then you and I started to speak and uh, other people, you know, were flying close to you within our organization, doing a really good job. And, and uh, we started to talk and uh, I was saying, boy, Jeremy wants a lot of money up front. So, you know, <laughs> I was, I was a little bit stirred and, and unsettled. And then one morning, I had this great sense of peace and clarity, you know, just to move forward. And it was one of the best decisions as a company we could ever make. It was really, and Jeremy, you know, you could have sold the company and been, a, been hard to get a hold of. No, you were, I say this affectionately, you were, you know, texting and nagging and prodding and you, you wanted to make sure that this was landed properly. And so, so you were just making sure that we were in great shape. And uh, until the new team came in place, 
it was really, really a fabulous opportunity. And uh, it's been giving great fruitage and helping a lot of schools. Here you go with the founder of a, a second company with the latest and greatest tools. And so your mind is still being challenged. Like all of a sudden, uh, why, for example, on the new platform with Abby, is there great technical cost savings? Let's give everybody a little insight about, you know, this new company and why it was so fabulous, why it is so fabulous. Yeah, well, I'll tell you the thing that I thought was one of the coolest things. And uh, it's, maybe this is just nerdy, but just, I'll tell you about it. So one of the things that we, um, we realized is like, there's a lot of costs in um, writing uh, unique content for a school. Like, in fact, you, you would end up at, um, spending a lot of time and money putting together the, the content. And what's funny is, is that there was really no way, like you could look at the data, like I recall looking at data, you know, over the last decade uh, for martial arts schools. And you, there, was no, there was no real prediction of like, hey, this page, is um, like if we hire this sales writer that the, the, the page is going to perform this way and they're going to get this many leads. And if we write, we do it another way, you know, what the difference would be, what the difference would be. And so um, we kind of like came to the conclusion that, um, and by the way, the, the person I'm talking about when I say we is, um, we, there was a small team initially, uh, uh, but I spent a lot of time with Joel Rue, uh, a few uh, recall him. He's been in martial arts for about a decade as well. Um, but we spent a lot of time thinking about like, okay, how can we um, have this like machine learning system uh, learn what, uh, learn about a lot of different websites, see the copy from a lot of different websites, the sales writing from a lot of different websites, and then from, from martial arts and from not martial arts, and then start to learn what is like helping someone buy like what is what makes some help someone like make the decision on why a martial arts class is better so when someone at abby for example starts putting together the content they take the current website that the person has um they can learn a little bit about like w about the school they can talk to the owner they can learn about like what programs they want to offer and then the abby system is able to combine that into uh automatic uh sales pages it can create the sales pages, it can um, generate the content needed, it can generate what the pictures that are needed and give the school owner like the best chance to generate leads from um, very low cost, at a very low cost and at a very high effective uh, rate. And the beauty of that is if you are watching your cost on not needing so many high developers, then you can pass that savings along to the end user. They don't have to pay these exorbitant rates for this type of technology. Uh, Jeremy, you always talk about uh, uh, load balancing, load time, how to improve page speed. So what were you thinking about as you built Abby with that concept? Yeah, uh, so Abby is super fast. If you take a look at, uh, like if you just take any of the, um, like speed, page speed tests that are out there, um, I, you know, I haven't, uh, I know that you have a new team in place and they've been ma managing this and, uh, the new team has done phenomenal because like I did a, sp a page speed test, uh, earlier today, just to kind of see like, okay, where, where is it at? And it's extremely fast. Um, and anyway, the, the kind of concept that we were, uh, working on and from the beginning was that Abby had to be extremely quick. It had to load, um, it be the be the number one fastest system that we could possibly create. And the reason why we did that is because there's a lot of data that supports that people convert on websites that are fast. Um, uh, pages that are really fast uh, perform well with other partners, such as you could get into like search engines or ad systems. Um, and all this data is kind of like publicly available. Like you can look it up and see what makes these pages fast um, and what, makes the um or what kind of like cutoff times a, con a user will stay on a page for before they'll leave and so when we built abby we built it from the the initial concept of it had to be really quick it had to be um almost instantaneous loads 
Yeah. So it doesn't have to think, the search engine doesn't have to think about how to load this thing. And you always talk about lighthouse scores and how Abby performs better than the other players out there. Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Let everybody know what like content pain is or light lighthouse scores are. Yeah, well, there's, there's parameters that um, I think like any anyone who's who's like providing a web page. So you could take like a Yelp, for example, or um, anybody who wants to like show a web page through their system. Like you don't want to send somebody to a web page. Like, for example, your Yelp, you've got 10 different martial arts schools that you want to show someone. You don't want to show them uh, a page that is really slow or doesn't load on mobile and they're using mobile or, um, you know, it takes 30 seconds to get the first page to load. Um, you want to show them a page that's like, hey, I'm hungry for Italian food and I click on this restaurant to the, go to their website and boom, I see a picture of their menu and the spaghetti that I want to eat. Like, and so it's that kind of concept where, um, you know, we try to take a look at like, or originally we, we wanted to take a look at like these kind of core metrics that other uh, places that, that send traffic to the websites from what they consider. And so we saw a lot of people using Lighthouse, a lot, or I'm sorry, a lot of businesses using Lighthouse as a, as a guidepost, like GT Metrics, for example, uses that. And so that's what we based it on and uh, performs very strongly uh, on those core metrics that we were looking at. Uh, Jeremy, I have a local dentist that runs a great organization, has really professional dentists there. But when I do a search, like if I'm moving into this city and I do a search and I say family dentistry or children's dentistry in this city, they're nowhere to be found. I mean, mm. when, you, when it loads, it doesn't even rank. It's on the second or third page. So when you created Abby, you were saying, what am I going to do as far as ranking goes? What was the objectives? Well, I think the, the kind of key one there was um, page speed, was that we, it just needed to be extremely, extremely fast. Need to work on mobile, need to work on tablets, needs to work on web. And I think that like all of these things are, you get these in like a lot of like websites today. You get, it works on mobile. It's just that like, to what degree does it work on mobile? To what degree is the, is the page speed? And so these were all just, it was like built with this optimization in mind from day zero and which informs a lot of the downstream decisions when you say like for example you know there were there were times when we could have we could have added a plugin that would provide this great new feature for example and a lot of times we would decide like that is going to cause the pages to load slower therefore um we're not going to do that and so there are mm -hmm. some things that we just intentionally chose not to do to make sure that uh, uh, we, we are extremely, extremely efficient in the things that we think generates the most amount of leads. Yeah, and you've been working with the concept of a brand reputation tool, like when there gets a, a review, how that could be populated on the website if it's a really great review. And how we can track organic leads or where the leads are coming from. Can you expound on that at all? Why is it valuable for an owner to know exactly where his leads are coming from? Um, yeah, so the, uh, the concept there was, you know, you have, a, you have a marketing budget and you wanna know like what's useful budget, uh, where, like where, what's, what's working for me, what's not working for me. Um, like, should I spend more money on Facebook or should I spend more money um, on Yelp or wherever the case is? And so um, the, the system, Abby, what it, the way it works is it essentially just looks to see if <clears throat> there are indicators of where the traffic came from uh, or where the user came from, what they were looking at, what, they, what ad they saw, uh, and then it kind of passes that information on. Uh, into the Abbey backend system as well. And so then Abbey can make a more intelligent decision uh, to decide like what exactly the optimization is that it needs to make. Yeah, so in kind of closing, as you look back with this deep and rich uh, relationship you had with a lot of martial arts schools, 
are you are you are you kind of happy? Do you pat yourself on the back on this making an impact on digital inquiries? We were always trying to get a low cost lead. There were so many ways that we used to do it a long time ago. Boy, you really hit on something when you went into that Krav Maga school. You just really hit on something. Yeah, no, thanks. I, I think at the time, as you probably recall, like there were um, there was really only two businesses that were any good at generating leads online for martial arts schools. Um, and I think that um, like there were different paths, like one focused heavily on trials, one focused heavily on leads. Um, and I think that like the two different flavors uh, have found different kind of niches as, as time has went, but it's been really cool to see it evolve and really cool to see um, EFC, you know, evolve with it. So yeah, really glad Great. to see you guys running with it. Great. I thought that this would be a fascinating historical sketch because people haven't heard Jeremy speak in a long time. And I just thought I was really excited about conducting this interview with you and letting everybody know kind of like pulling back the curtain and seeing what happened over the years and how we got to Abby right now. It's just a great technology. It's a great study. You did really great hanging around with some of the best people in the world and putting it all together. You're a great guy that can kind of connect the dots with something. You can, you can find the right people to connect something. And I think that's absolutely extraordinary. And my man, uh, for all of us in the martial arts, who has benefited and will benefit in the future. I think we owe you a, a hearty slap on the back now that you know you know some Krav Maga, we can give you a hearty <laughs> slap on the back and, and say that on behalf of the field, let me say thank you for your dedication and your devotion to digital marketing and the huge, enormous impact that you've had on the field. It's been absolutely remarkable. We thank you for that. Thanks, thanks. No, I appreciate it. And, um... You know, I think um, just to add this in, where you guys have taken Abby, like all these all these advancements that you guys have made, um, I'm actually even blown away. I went like I pulled the numbers this morning, and I was literally, I didn't know how you're going to make it any faster than it was, and it's faster than it was. So good to see that you guys are like continue to invest and improve it. It's um, really amazing. We're into always raising the standards of martial arts. We were taught that by some great people. Jeremy, upwards and onwards, and thank you for spending this time. Thanks.